May the Lord strengthen you with his joy. And may he grant you all the perseverance that you need to carry on to the completion of what he's given you to do on this earth. Well, my dear ones, here we are again. I'm rerunning this message, which I got in October of 2017. And this message is very pertinent right now. There are no guarantees of any amount of time here, just the mandate to work at your giftings as hard and focused as you can. We are in the final stretch. This is not a rapture drill. This is the final warning that is coming. Back in 2017, there was a suggestion of some more time. I believe it was five years or so. But all I hear the Lord saying is get very busy at your apostolate and don't sit and wait for the rapture or you will be left behind. Guaranteed. He is telling us these things to motivate us to do as much as we can in the remaining time to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. If you think you can kick back and wait, think again, because you will be left behind. He is not playing games, but he is giving the lukewarm believers a chance to wake up and make up for their sloth and indifference by telling them to get busy. There are times when I confess I am one of those. In any case, if you don't get busy, but live just for yourself, you will be here to live through or die during the tribulation. No more games, family. This is serious. What does it mean? Well, he is saying the very same things now that he said back in 2017 in October, except there are no guaranteed time frames. All could end suddenly within the next month or go on for longer. This is not a promise of more time like we had back then. This is a notice that we are in the home stretch and the trumpet could cry out at any moment. Happy are those whose lamps are lit, expecting their master's return and those who have an abundance of oil in their flasks. So here is the message from 2017, and it goes over some of the same points that he's asking of us right now. And there is a mention of five years, but he never confirmed it. Never confirmed two years, three years, or five years. At least not in this message. So we're kind of in the same place now, except we truly are in the home stretch. And the graces are prolific. If you will just rise up and take hold of what he's given you to do. The Lord bless you, dear ones. This is a beautiful message from back then. I hope it gives you the courage and stamina to go on. I want to introduce this message by saying we do not know who gave their last tear to get the stay of execution of earth. But all the broken hearts, rivers of tears, fast and sickness offerings to the Father to grant more time, more grace, more mercy have been heard. He has turned his hand away from giving the command for the war of all wars and the rapture. He has extended the time. Some of you will doubt this is the Lord, but all I can say is that tonight when he gave this message, he was stronger and clearer than I have seen or felt him in a very long time, which prompts me to affirm that I believe this is a message from the Lord. Jesus, you have laid out your will for us tonight. Thank you. Please empower us to be faithful with the time you're giving us. Amen. Well, the Lord Jesus came to me tonight after communion and began speaking about rapture timing. Hold on to your hats. <laughs> Jesus began, I know you are anxious about the timing of events, 
That is why I am telling you, we still have a ways to go. Wow, I know what that means. But I asked him, I said, five years? He answered, maybe. Much could be done in that time as you count it on earth. At the same time, much could be forestalled. Much evil could be done and come to the surface. That is why I need a group of intercessors on the forefront, shouting down the enemy, praying down the wickedness and evil that spreads like the plagues of Egypt. Claire, you know in your heart there will be more time. You know this, don't you? Yes, Lord, but you've said time was ending. And for me, five years is like five minutes. Truly it is. There's going to be a move of God unparalleled, and just now my faithful ones are entering into it. You see, many have been ready for many years and have borne their fruit as they abided in me. But now I have a new generation, a new crop of soldiers and brides, with a new vision to spread my love to the darkest corners of the earth. And they are doing it. I'm going to cause an explosion of faith around the world. It has already begun with certain ministers and countries. But I'm going to accelerate it. I'm fueling this explosion with my Holy Spirit. Much that has been prophesied will come to pass, and America is going to lead the way for revival. My Father and I have chosen more time, more grace, more mercy. But I am not calling my brides to lay down their arms, but to guard what I am bringing upon the earth. And the reason I do not want you or your heart dwellers to put down your fasts and abstinences is that I want you to all be equipped with the greatest gifts to call my mercy down upon the earth. You will not be liked for this dance. You will receive more booze and more calumny, and some will leave the channel. But my heart is for you all to continue to live lives of self-denial, simple lives where your flesh is kept under wraps until it dies of old age or starvation. <laughs> but in the meantime, you will grow stronger and stronger in my anointing. There is a time for fasting and mourning. There is a time to lay down the sackcloth and take up the garments of praise. Yet still, I am calling you to continue to keep your flesh down. What does that look like? Don't spend hours in the kitchen making gourmet meals. Don't spend a fortune on expensive food. Make each day a third world day in the sense that you eat sensibly with simplicity and good nourishment but avoid the dainties. Like tiramisu, Lord? Exactly. These things that taste so wonderful are waiting for you in heaven. You'll have an eternity of delights, although you will find that the riches of the Spirit far outweigh your desire for anything having to do with the flesh. Yet there will be an abundance of rich foods, especially on the heavenly feast days. Feast days? Yes, the memorials of great victories and historical markers. For when I delivered my people and bathed them in my spirit and delivered them from evil en masse. Yes, indeed, there will be celebrations, the likes of which you have never seen on earth. But for now, I want those who profess to be mine, I want them to live a circumcised life, free of worldly attachments, free of heartburn, free of guilt, free to worship me with a clean conscience, knowing that they are in my favor, just as I came to you tonight to tell you how very pleased I am with you. This is an absolute prerequisite for the gifts I'm releasing on earth in this hour. Do not do anything to compromise my friendship. Do not try my mercy and patience. Rather, be faithful with the littlest things. And here I want to add an aside, guys. I, I've had a couple of temptations to get something that was really frivolous. And I remembered how the Lord distances himself from me when I get into self-will or do something that I know he wouldn't be the happiest with. 
And that hurt enough that I just couldn't do it. What I wanted was far, far less important to me than having his fellowship. So I've been guilty of compromise in the past, but it's cost me dearly, and it's so painful when he's quiet, and you know you've blown it. Jesus continued, I wish for them to press into the greater gifts, prophecy, healing, wonders that witness to my power and love. To have these gifts in operation, I need them to abstain from worldly pleasures. Not sin, that's a given, but abstain from those things that feed the appetite for more and better. Fine food, clothing, luxuries, comforts, unknown to the poor. All these are poison to the spirit living within. They all cause a downward spiral of dependency on the flesh and feed selfishness. No, I want them to strive for the better gifts that loose the bonds of the captives. This is a work, a great work of the Spirit, whereby you lose more and more attachments in favor of caring more and more for those around you. I am calling all of you into a life of love for your brothers and sisters, and as you detach yourselves from the world, I will increase that love until you are burning with charity wherever you go. Lord, I felt such conviction when I watched Todd go into a store and all he did was minister. My whole attitude when I have to go to the store is get in and get out. (laughs) I don't think or care to tune in to those around me that might need ministry. I just want to get out of there. Is that a bad thing? Jesus answered me. How do you feel when you minister to a soul? Mm, Wonderful. And that is as it should be. When you deny your flesh, you lose interest in what the stores have to offer in favor of the opportunity to touch a hurting soul with my love and a word to uplift them. When you deny yourself, you empty the selfish carnal appetites and make room for my loving presence to overtake you. You have experienced this. Was it not wonderful and worth every effort? Yes, Lord, my contentment was over the top. That's what I mean when I said I have come to bring life in abundance. That is the abundant life, because you are alive and ministering aliveness to others. You were truly my ambassadors and care little for the foolish things that used to motivate you. And as far as your condition in Ezekiel's, there's going to be an explosion of healing for my ministers so they can minister on the highest levels. But remember, there will always be offerings, Simon's Cross offerings, always. But they will be less and less painful for those of you who've made it a habit to detach yourself from the pleasures of the flesh. I know these words are not easy for most. But I have not called most. I have called my brides up higher, and I'm not done yet. We're going to keep climbing, that is, if you want to. Living a life of self-denial is not for everyone, but the fruits will be experienced by everyone, and some who refuse to go out to the field to work will change their minds and do my will when they see what they could have had if only they would give up what they are so desperately hanging on to. Boy, that describes me to a T. So, just to be clear, Lord, are you saying we have five years yet? No, I'm saying you have more time, more than you previously thought, which was three years. I am saying my Father has determined that his mercy will flourish before the final hour when no one can jump off the fence. This is also a warning to those of you who know you have turned lukewarm in favor of your selfish appetites. You have an opportunity to grow into the full stature of the sons and daughters of God. I am extending an invitation to you fence-sitters who are still harboring sin in your lives, hoping my mercy will cover you in that last hour. It will not. Either live the life I have called you to, or stay here and suffer. The choice is yours, 
and in this moment you have the break you need to rise up. Don't defer your salvation another moment. Don't put it off. You will be left in the dust and ashes of your sins. If you are living together, get married or move out. If you're stealing, stop now and make restitution. If you are living selfishly for yourself, begin to serve the poor. Give to those who have nothing. So, Lord, are you saying perhaps three or four more years? You are close, but I will not give you an exact time frame. I must tell you that my Father's judgment will continue to manifest itself on earth with disasters of man-made and nature-made origin. Your only protection will be to live a life that is ready to be called home any minute. I will not give any guarantees. The just and the unjust shall perish together. Their destinations will be totally different. I am telling you, bring your gifts to fruition. Work hard under my anointing. Stop living for yourself. Stop feeding your flesh and seek out the lame and wounded and what you can do for them with your limited resources. If you are called to the marketplace, support those who minister and those that are in the mission field, and it will go well with you when I come. Truly, I tell you, you will not lose your reward. Live before me every day as if it were your last because plagues, wars, and terrible earth disasters will continue to accelerate as the birth pains get closer. You know not the day when I will call you home, and you will give an accounting. Therefore, begin to live for me and my agendas now, so that you will have treasure in heaven. Those of you who have foolishly buried your talents because you were sitting on the roof watching for my coming, here is your chance to make it right. Get busy. If you are busy about my business, you will not need to know the day nor the hour, nor will you be left behind. Make no mistake about it. Rooftop sitters who selfishly pass their time expecting a free ride to heaven will be left behind. The only ones I am taking are those who are busy about my work or being faithful to their state in life and teaching their children how to give and how to serve. I admonish those of you who continue to say they cannot hear or see me. You are not pressing in sufficiently. You are not living single-mindedly for me, but are compromising with the world. I have not become your all-in-all -all and your everything, or I guarantee you you would not be without my strong guiding hand and loving arms. Have you not felt my hugs when with a good heart you went out of your way for someone? Have you not felt my deep gratitude? The secret, then, is to do this more and more each day, and you will accustom yourself to feeling my presence and approval with you. Having this assurance, you will run expectantly to your prayer closet and lock the door until you touch the hem of my garment. Many of you know in your hearts you've been lazy, and that has affected your ability to hear and see me. In your heart you were convinced you were not worthy because you have withheld yourself from me. This is not works righteousness. It is a working, loving relationship that when you love someone, you give up your priorities and rights to further their agendas. And when you do this, you come to expect to be in communication with the love of your life because you're living for them. Interestingly, this is the rhema I got when I finished the message. A servant may have a desire to fast, but he's obliged to pass the whole day in digging and plowing or whatever you please. Well, if this servant is well instructed, he will think, but if I do this, I shall not be able to satisfy my master. Well, what will he do? He will eat his breakfast and mortify himself in some other way. We must always act in the way that will give most glory to the good God.
And I'm not sure who said that, but I think it was St. John Vianney. So all in all, my brides, you were on the right track. Please, my brides, do not fast in your flesh. In other words, allow me to lead you. Make a rhema card for fasting and different kinds of fasts, and that will help to guide you when it comes up. The object is not to starve you, but to help you become indifferent to food, to the point where you only eat to nourish your body, not for the pleasure of it. And I wanted to say as an aside, I used to tone down my meals with ground flax seed, and water also will kill extremely good food. It'll kill the taste. Jesus continued, These are things you can offer me out of love for me, and they are acceptable gifts. But bear in mind, many of you already have sicknesses that are sufficient crosses or crushing family situations. I want you to be strong to function, but indifferent as to what you eat. This will close the door to constant preoccupations with the flesh and help you shift your lives into the spirit full time. Expect miraculous changes in your walk, my people. Remember, you cannot outgive me. And that was the end of his message. And I just wanted to share a couple of things with you. I've talked about this before, and there are abstinences that work very well for separating your appetites from your flesh. Some partial fasts are vegetables and grains only. Believe me, that gets old real quick. <laughs> Abstaining from dairy. I use almond milk and coconut milk. Abstaining from sweets, butter, spices, and cream sauces. Abstaining from meat and eating fish instead. Some people fast on water for a very limited time or a time designated by the Lord and confirmed by outside sources. Bread or rice and water is a good fast. Fasting from fast foods and sodas is an abstinence. Supplementing your fast with protein drinks, by the way, I use Orgain protein powder. It's great, but you have to take a, a digestive pill, an anti-gas pill with it, because it does have legumes in it, and it can cause gas, but it's a wonderful source of protein. It's all vegan. But I use uh, Orgain protein powder with almond and coconut milk and coffee for flavoring. It meets all my needs when I'm asked not to eat normal meals. And if your fast causes you to collapse, you most likely are fasting in the flesh. Do not fast to the point where you cannot carry on with your responsibilities. You can't think straight and you can't pray. That's definitely not God's will. You can fast from TV and social websites, fast from internet curiosities, and replace scripture reading with the time you would have wasted. Also, remember, all fasting needs to be accompanied by prayer and works of charity in order to be totally effective. And I just want to take a moment to thank you who have been seeing to our needs and praying for us. Wow, your kindness to us has spilled over onto the local pregnancy center as well as those who have no heat or electricity and many individuals in extreme need that had nowhere else to turn. Thank the Lord, we're here for them. Thank you for caring. In heaven, you'll be credited just as much as if you'd put out the messages. I can't do this without your support. Thank you, dear ones. Remember, the Lord does not forget.